welcome to the 18th episode of Conscious Awakening, where we talk about spiritual shiz and holistic healing and whatever we want to talk about. And today we have Zach Robinson, hey. and he is a, how do you want me to, I forgot to ask you how you want me to introduce yourself, Crystal. Um, I, <laughs> Chris, I, I, I call myself like a, a crystal worker, um, but I also do like Reiki energy healing and all kinds of energy healing. I, done a bunch of modalities but Mm -hmm. anything that gets me connected with crystals again yay yeah i definitely want to talk to you more about crystals because there's just so much to talk about um first of all like how did you start your journey with crystals um well when i was around 11 um my father actually passed away and so after that i was seeing like psychologists psychiatrists all kinds of stuff and just kind of working through that And the first thing that finally really kind of made a big difference for me was Reiki energy healing. And then once my like energies had balanced out a little bit, I was at the the energy shop and there was a tray of amethyst there and I felt all this fun tingly energy coming off the amethyst and I pulled my hand away and I'm like, oh, it stopped. Mm -hmm. That's strange. (laughs) So it was my first time ever really feeling crystal energy. And I had quite a few kind of strange experiences working with crystals, um, just kind of having some kind of negative reactions with crystals, but then later after working through some blockages, being able to then work with those crystals and have a much more pleasant experience anytime I did meditate with them. So it's just been really interesting seeing what kind of comes up as I'm being drawn to different crystals. And then once the energy shifts, kind of what other crystals come next and Mm -hmm. where does it lead me then? Yeah, because I think that's how... I got started this whole thing like I just was really interested in crystals but I didn't really know much about it Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like oh these are cute these are nice I like these colors Um, but I for me personally I don't feel like the tingling I just I photo what I learned now I just know like oh that's the one I'm drawn to Mm -hmm. and when I heard my friends kind of say like oh yeah my energy or my hands were really hot when I felt crystals I'm like how come I don't feel that way (laughs) but yeah I I learned that everything everyone like reacts to crystals and responds to crystals differently right absolutely yeah and and that's one of the things that I, I talk about in the crystal basics class is you're not going to always react the same way to a crystal that the author of the crystal book did. Mm -hmm. Um, So I always really recommend like get three different books on crystals if you really want to research them um, because the books are written down by people who have sat down and meditated and connected with each and every one of those crystals and then kind of written their experience about it. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a lot of things that are similar between the author's experiences. And so that really tells you what the crystal is focusing on. But then some of the other minor things that the crystal works on that might have been more personal for the author, but it can help you with even more things that the author may have not listed. Mm -hmm. So don't ever guess what the crystal can do. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever works for you too, because I see it now, those like those books and me research on Google, it's kind of more just like a basis for Mm -hmm. the generalities of it. But if it works in a different way for me, I'm like, cool, that's, that's awesome. It's different for me. Yeah. Yeah. But Now, when I used to start, I'm like, I don't know what this crystal is, or I don't know what this is, but now I kind of have the basics. Mm -hmm. But now I, it's funny because how I was like three years ago, I have friends coming up to me and they're like, oh, what's this crystal? What's this crystal? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I know what it is. (laughs) So if you are like just starting with with crystals, I mean, there's a lot of great resources out there. Absolutely. And um, how did you start like researching more about it? Like mainly like books? So um, when I very first started, um, I, you know, I, I had my phone on me all the time. So mm-hmm. Google is, you know, only a fl- few clicks away. Um, but one of the first sites that I really resonated with was actually, um, it was Stones for um, addiction recovery. Um, I can't remember the exact name of the site cause it's been forever since I've been there now, but it related all of the crystals and their healing attributes to like the 12 steps for like an AA program. Mm. And which made a lot of sense to me cause I was very interested in psychology at the time. And so like having a structured system was really nice, but I noticed that they kept quoting like the same authors over and over again. So eventually I just got the books from the authors that they were quoting and now I'm like in love with Judy Hall and Robert Simmons and mm-hmm. Melody. Um, those are my three go-tos all the time. Um, but it's it's just really fun 
Yeah, just learning more about them every day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because even though like you said you've been working for like nine years with crystals, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still a lot more crystals that you don't know about. Yeah, and there's new ones getting discovered all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's crazy. Like I saw my first video of like somebody mining a quartz out, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, that's insane that it just comes out like that. Because yeah. and the, oh, the other thing too. <laughs> my brain you know, it's just all <laughs> over the place so they're the natural crystals but there's also man-made crystals yes and um i was telling my friend like i was showing her bismuth and i'm like oh this is a man-made crystal but her question was like does it have like is it just as effective as natural crystals and and that's a very good question we hear that a lot um as far as you know how effective is the crystal going to be um or how powerful it is and personally, I love natural, untreated raw crystals just because there is um, so many different elements that Mother Nature have kind of put together um, and that have presented themselves through the energy of the crystal. And I think it's really beneficial to connect with as authentic of a piece as possible. Mm -hmm. um, especially in its raw form because you can see some of the geometry of the crystal and that activates some of the sacred geometry within your psychology and within your aura. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as natural versus synthetic or imitation crystals, imitation crystals are something that looks like a rock but has nothing chemically or structurally resembling the crystal it's trying to imitate. Mm -hmm. um, so I really don't feel anything from them mm. other than, you know, if you want to use it to hold an intention, if it's glass, it can, um, but if plastic, probably not very long. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some synthetic stones that are the same chemical composition and they do have the same crystal and structure, but because they're so hard to find in nature, they are created in a lab. Oh, I got you. Um, so they do have a similar vibration. However, when I, because I'm more of a feeler, um, I don't feel the vibrations from synthetic crystals to go as deep. Mm -hmm. They're not as penetrating. And I think that has to deal with the amount of time that they have spent in the earth. And whenever a crystal is embedded in the earth, it's like absorbing all of the um, stories that are playing out on the earth's surface. So mm -hmm. it collects a lot of wisdom just from seeing these different interactions between people play out and kind of filtering that, that experience through their own perspective. Mm. Yeah, because I, I mean, I personally can't really tell the difference because like I said, I don't really feel anything, mm -hmm. but I mean, if you're drawn to something, you're drawn to something and that's all that matters, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I, when I first started, it was really hard for me to to kind of justify buying more expensive crystals. But mm -hmm. now I'm at a point where I'm like, ah, oh, take all my money. I want all, <laughs> I want all, yeah. the, I want all the large, beautiful crystals. Um, so do you have like any advice to anyone who wants to start buying crystals, but kind of tell them, tells themselves, oh, I don't want to spend my money on that right now. Well, um, I definitely say, you know, whatever your budget is, work with that. You don't want to like go broke buying manifestation crystals. That <laughs> yeah. kind of defeats the purpose of <laughs> yeah. it. Um, but if, you know, if you're feeling really pulled to something and it does have a bigger price tag, I mean, you're being drawn to it for a reason. Mm -hmm. So either connect with it while you're in the shop and work with it for a little while. Um, and then if you feel like you don't need to actually take it home with you, then put it back. That's all it needed to do for you. But if you're still feeling drawn to it, go ahead and make the commitment to it. Mm -hmm. Because some, some crystals, the reason that they are priced the way that they are is not only because of how rare they are, but sometimes there is like numero numerology that's like in the pricing of it too. I know sometimes at Enchanted when we get crystals that come in, it's like, we can't figure out what we want to price it at because it's like, this is what we should price it at, but it just feels wrong. And so it's like, mm -hmm. we get the pendulum out and it's like, okay, this is what it wants to sell for. Mm -hmm. So you never really know why it's priced that way, but just go for it. If you're really feeling the connection, invest in it and it really will change your life. Yeah. Cause I, I have that, that's happened to me too, where I've, I was drawn to a crystal, but I was like, mm, I'll come back. And then I would come back. That's what happened to my bismuth. I went to the shop, I think four times. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. Cause if I keep getting drawn to it, then mm -hmm. it's meant to be in my life for some re for a reason. And I, I think it just, it also correlates with your journey of, you know, just a spiritual journey. Like I started buying crystals that were like $2 and $3 and now I'm, I'm, you know spending more because yeah. i feel like i'm expanding more oh yeah and just learning more about it as i learn more about myself mm -hmm. and so just whatever you're drawn to <laughs> go for it but yeah work go for it and work with your budget um 
Do you have, so do you have like, I, Chelsea kind of talked about this, about like the colors and the crystals, but do you have um, like your own interpretation of certain colors that you've learned for yourself or? Does that, wait, did that question make sense? I feel like no, I was no, just makes, I, perfect, I, I was like sense. blabbering. <laughs> um, so for me, I really do like the traditional chakra system. Um, so whenever I am kind of feeling blocked by a client and like I don't know really what to grab for them, like nothing's calling to me, then I will go to the chakra system just because it's something that logically I'm very familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as there are, there I've noticed some kind of differences between how I have grown to work with crystals and then some of the traditional associations like when I work with pink crystals a lot of people automatically say oh that's the heart chakra I'm mm -hmm. like well it is the heart chakra but not really because it's a slightly higher energy center for the pink energy center on your mm -hmm. body that sits between your throat and your heart um, but it's it's funny because when you work with chakra systems and crystals, the crystals will kind of teach you about your body. And then if you aren't really familiar with how to communicate with crystals, the chakra system can kind of open up other parts of your body that would make it easier for you to then talk to crystals or any other kind of elemental spirits or angels, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so usually if I'm stuck more in the physical, I'll go through the chakra system to get to the right crystal. Um, but sometimes the crystals are like, this is where I want to go. Put me here. <laughs> yeah, like, here. Just slap me here. <laughs> it's like, throw me in coach. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, is it okay if you can kind of just like go through the chakras and the correlation Absolutely. with crystal colors? So um, whenever I'm doing um, chakras and crystals, usually any kind of black crystals or brown crystals, I use those for kind of grounding the energy center. For me, the black crystals and the white crystals, you can work with all of the chakras. So if all you have is like a white piece of selenite or white piece of clear quartz, you can use it for anything. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as the, the other chakras, like for the root chakra, I really love jaspers and obsidians, especially mm -hmm. mahogany obsidian, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just because I like to get kind of really deep into the soul level and obsidians really help you to kind of block out any kind of fear any kind of sorrow and really help you to feel like you're in a protected space so you can do a lot of that foundational work mm -hmm. and mahogany obsidian in particular i love because when you're working with the root chakra you're able to tap into your past lives mm -hmm. because it's your connection to all the lifetimes you've had on earth and mahogany obsidian just kind of like pulls all that energy up mm -hmm. and it's like oh yes i did learn about this in another lifetime that's why it came so easily easy to me when i was in school mm. maybe i should do this for a career or you might see oh i've already pursued this career in another lifetime maybe it's time to try something different because mm. it doesn't work out when i do that yeah um but it's it's really fun just seeing what will come up with the root chakra because not only does it deal with past lives but it's also like your finances your home life and how comfortable you feel and no matter what environment you're in. Mm -hmm. So like my husband, he wanted to move like every year or so. And I'm just like, let's work on your root chakra for a little while and <laughs> then like, see huh, how you feel about let's moving. Let's ground a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but he's a lot more peaceful now, a lot more, you know, Yay. grounded and he's very content. I mean, we are moving, but we're excited about it because mm -hmm. it's for educational purposes, not just to leave the space. Um, but like you're going up from there, you've got your sacral chakra and that is very much your creativity center and the, the area where you are very emotionally connected to your environment. Mm. So you'll usually have like some some good positive energy coming to you and your sacral from your friends and from your romantic partners, but also from like anything that inspires you to kind of go out and do more, mm -hmm. um, whatever your career field is anything that inspires you to kind of be more productive and start to bring things to fruition, all that energy is going in through your sacral. So if you're feeling creatively blocked, um, carnelian is really yeah, great. Yeah, I love carnelian. Uh, it's amazing for your sacral chakra. And it's kind of funny because as far as the elements go, your sacral chakra is traditionally aligned with the water element mm. um, because you've got, um, physically, it connects to like your intestines and all of your digestive organs where you're absorbing the water into your body. Um, but it also connects to your reproductive organs and like the, the waters of the womb. But 
carnelian itself is a fire element stone. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason in our society, we are very kind of um, closed off emotionally. We don't like to show our true selves. We don't like to deeply connect with people because it's it can be kind of like a scary place to be at when you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And carnelian's like, it's okay to be vulnerable. Let's fire up the waters, get passionate about something. Yeah. Stop, you know, holding yourself back all the time. And so it's, it's great for just like stirring those waters and really igniting you. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, like I really love honey calcite. Just sometimes mm -hmm. people are very overly passionate, um, <laughs> very physical. Yeah. Um, and so I really like honey calcite or nice orange calcite just because it's very calming and soothing. Mm -hmm. And calcites help you to reconnect with your physical body in a much more gentle and nurturing way and not so much of like a brutal physical way yeah um but then let's see so up from there you've got your solar plexus and your solar plexus is nice and bright and yellow fiery like the sun and personally i really like working on this chakra because um for some people their center is more in their solar plexus other people it's more in their heart depending upon kind of like what their life purpose is i think that's why they're more centered there mm -hmm. but your solar plexus it's I call it like your energetic backbone. So anything that you feel confident in doing, confident in moving forward with, that confidence, it's it's coming from your solar plexus and it's telling you that, yes, you, you are able to do this. You're able to accomplish it and you're able to do it well. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that energy is developed in early childhood because we're constantly being told like, oh, you're so good at drawing or, oh, you're so good at math or you're so good at sports. Um, or the opposite. Yeah, or the exact opposite. Yeah. Um, you know, depending upon your home life. But the all of that energy will kind of sit in your solar plexus because it's where you've learned, you know, what am I good at? What am, what are my strong points? Mm -hmm. And so whenever you work with the solar plexus, a lot of times you are going deep into that person's like personal life history mm -hmm. and um, like working with their inner child. And at all the times the inner child just needs to know it's like, it's all right. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you mess it up, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be okay. Like you did it perfectly in your own way kind of thing. And a lot of people just need that kind of reassurance and that comforting so that they can kind of get out of a, a rut. Mm -hmm. um, but your solar plexus can also be where you process a lot of grief. Um, because sometimes we think that we can't accomplish certain things without the support of someone else. Yeah. So when that support leaves us, we, we have to do a lot of restrengthening and repairing for the solar plexus. Because mm -hmm. um, your solar plexus and your heart, they're right next to each other. They do share energies with each other. Um, that's why like when I do chakra balances, I always do infinity patterns in between the chakras just to help them communicate with each other, mm. help the energy flow between them more easily. And whenever you can get your heart and your solar plexus to work together it's it's so much easier to heal the inner child and to um kind of like i guess fall with grace and fall with dignity like if you yeah. do try something and you fail at it it's like you know it's not the end of the world yeah because your heart chakra is nice and open and it's like it's all right we mm -hmm. love you anyways there's like no there's no wall <laughs> yeah. to guard yourself yeah absolutely um but yeah and that so we'll talk about the heart chakra i guess um <laughs> For, oh, I didn't mention any stones for the solar plexus, did I? Yeah. Um, so for the solar plexus, I really like citrine and tiger's eye. Um, Pyrite's my favorite too. Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Pyrite is perfect um, just because I like it. I like pyrite because it has like a dual function to it. Mm -hmm. It's very protective and it creates like a mirror around your aura and will reflect away anything negative, anything that's like, you know, not in alignment with what you're focused on. Mm -hmm. And then on the inside of that kind of like mirror bubble, it's helping you to attract and manifest and ground all of your thoughts, all of your ideas. That's because there's a lot of iron in that, which is very grounding element, mm -hmm. but that yellowy color connects with your solar plexus and it helps you to ground all of those um, projects that you have in your mind. Mm. Um, so yeah, pyrite is definitely amazing for that. My favorite. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, Tiger's Eye is probably my favorite for the solar plexus just because it is a stone. Um, for me, when I was first working with grounding crystals, I'm very much a Gemini. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, guys, but I'm a little, you know, mutable all over the place. Um, so 
for me, Tiger's Eye was very grounding and it just kind of like gently pulled me back into the earth and back into my body. Mm -hmm. um, whereas when I first started working with crystals and I would go for a piece of hematite, I would get such a migraine. Oh, really? My, yes, I had t absolutely terrible experiences with hematite. Um, but once I kind of learned that, you know, I do need to ground more deeply because the more that you ground, the further out into like the cosmos you can reach, the further out into the realms of mm -hmm. heaven you can reach. So once I kind of understood that and I wasn't so afraid of being here and being present, mm -hmm. um, the hematite was very quickly grounding for me. I could hold on to it and it's like, bam, back of my body. Mm -hmm. um, so it was one of those things I had to grow into, but the tiger's eye, it's always so gentle. It's always so loving. And it's also a stone of like perspective. So when you're working on the solar plexus and kind of like traumatic situations that happened in your childhood, it can help you to kind of see that situation in a different light mm -hmm. from a different understanding and kind of help you to understand why was I presented with that trauma or that challenge? Like, mm -hmm. how is this going to help me at all? Because a lot of times we get stuck there. It's like, okay, I accepted that it's happened, but yeah. why? Yeah. <laughs> why me? It's still there though. Yeah. yeah. So Tiger's Eye will really help you to kind of like shift your, your thoughts about the situation be like, oh, okay, that's how that, that fits into my life path. And that's mm -hmm. how I can, you know, teach others to grow from it yeah, and things that's like why that. that. That's why that happened. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but, um, so yeah, going back to the heart, um, the heart chakra, like it does connect with your physical heart, but primarily it connects with your lungs mm -hmm. and it's like the element of air. So it's a very, um, light and fluid vibration and it's also very resilient like people don't realize just how much their heart chakra can kind of like expand out mm -hmm. and then how far it can kind of constrict back in mm -hmm. your your heart chakra is it's like the center of this kind of like vortex that goes around you so for a lot of traditions, it really is kind of like the doorway to not only knowing who you are as a person, but also knowing like who your soul is and also being able to explore other dimensions by kind of going through the heart. Mm. And that's something that I try to focus on a lot in my meditations. So like rose quartz is great for when you're first working with your heart chakra. Mm -hmm. It's very much about like self-love, self-acceptance. But whenever you're getting into the more kind of like higher vibrations, the more like planetary consciousness and collective consciousness kind of things. I really like morganite. Morganite. Yeah. And um, nice pink morganite. It will, you'll have divine understanding for the most repulsive people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's really kind of like a nice peaceful place to be at because mm -hmm. then, you know, like all of those kind of negative people that you do have to interact with people who aren't, you know, fully aware of themselves. It's like, you understand they're on their own path and you know whatever they're doing it's not really influencing you unless you want it to influence you yeah um but that's both of those stones i like to use for more of the higher aspects of the heart but as far as like physically calming and soothing aspects of the heart i really like to stick with more of the green stones like malachite mm -hmm. um Malachite in particular, just because it has a very high copper content to it. And if you've ever done any kind of like, um, like research into kind of like things that help your circulation and things that help your joints, copper just keeps coming up. Mm. Um, and copper in a crystalline form will really help to very quickly push out any blockages that are around your heart or anything that your heart is kind of giving energy to it'll kind of break through any blockage so that the energy from your heart can fully support it mm. um but other than that i like you know green adventuring um yeah i, I <laughs> it's a pretty common stone and honestly i've been kind of resistant to working with it for a long time just because i'm like oh it's not that pretty it's not that sparkly <laughs> like it's everywhere it's not that expensive it can't be that powerful mm -hmm. but it has a very very subtle vibration to it that you really have to be present in order to experience mm. so now whenever i tell people about adventuring um i used to just say you know like it keeps you in the spirit of adventure it keeps you in the moment but the more that i sit with it the more i realize like just how perfect of a stone it is for if you're doing any type of mindfulness meditation or mindfulness practice mm. which highly highly encourage you guys to get into because um, 
mindfulness practices will help you to realize what does your heart respond to. Mm -hmm. And a stone like green aventurine will make that connection very clear for mm -hmm. you as far as why are your muscles tensing up whenever you're talking about a certain subject. Uh, your adventuring will kind of remind you it's like, hey, just relax your heart, remember to breathe, <laughs> breathe good. a little deeper. Yeah. Um, and it's very much, again, stay in the moment, stay mindful. Mm. Um, so I really like that for the heart chakra as well. Um, for like your throat chakra and communication though, like I've got on my, my blue tiger's eye or oh. hawk's eye and, um, like your throat chakra, it does get a lot of development and kind of structure from your social interactions. And so like we were talking earlier about like, you know, when, when you're growing up and it's like people tell you either not to speak, like I know I grew up in the South and so it was kind of like the common phrase you hear is children are to be seen, not heard. Mm. Um, so it's like, even if your parent doesn't say that to you directly, sometimes other people around you, you'll pick that up and you're like, oh, I'm supposed to be seen and not heard. Like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, but your, all of your stones for like your throat chakra will help you to kind of realize, oh, this is how I'm supposed to communicate that idea. This is an effective way of, you know, expressing myself or, you know, this is a really quick way to express myself and get everyone's attention. It might mm -hmm. not be effective, but it's quick. Yeah. Um, but like the hawk's eye or blue tiger's eye, again, it's a stone of perspectives and shifting like your thoughts on like past situations. Um, so for me, it's very good at helping me to not only ground my throat chakra energy, but also to kind of realize that just because I think I'm saying it the right way or the wrong way doesn't necessarily mean the other person's going to receive it that way. Mm -hmm. But however they do, it's totally fine. You know, you said I know what you need to say. Yeah, I, yeah. Said, I said exactly what I needed to say and how I needed to say it for me to feel like that energy was expressed. Mm -hmm. um, but the other stones that I really like are... Um, blue calcite and blue lace agate mm -hmm. um agates are a member of like the quartz family but they are very calming and soothing because it's not as refined of a quartz it's not as intensive an energy and a lot of the times our throat chakras it just needs like an either either a gentle opening a gentle release of all of those restrictions that we put on our throat or it just needs to kind of like gently kind of be calmed down and soothe and be like all right i understand that you were really upset during that argument but now it's the time to just let that go because it's not gonna affect anything mm -hmm. to express that like mm -hmm. there's no point in holding on to it just relax and release um but yeah blue calcite blue lace agate those are my go-to stones i know la lapis is good too right Oh, lapis yes. Lazuli. Yes, actually, um, I have a funny story about lapis for the throat chakra because when I first started working with crystals, I was under the impression that, you know, like if a book said a crystal worked with a particular chakra, that's the only chakra that it would work with. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I had this lapis necklace and I'm like, all right, I'm going to be more intuitive, guys. Let's mm -hmm. put on this lapis necklace and yeah. I'll get all these messages. It'll be great. However, it was like literally a solid chain of lapis all the way around my neck. Mm. And that night my my manager at um certain fast food restaurant that will go unnamed <laughs> um, he was just very kind of confrontational mm -hmm. for some reason and i am confrontation avoidant mm -hmm. like anytime that people start arguing i'm just kind of like you just eh, fade away and like, walk Bye. out <laughs> <That's me too>. <laughs> um, <laughs> But for whatever reason, I was just like, I told him exactly what was on my mind and I was not afraid to say oh, it. Yeah. And it's, I was like, oh, wow, this is really opening for you're my like, throat chakra. Is, you're like, this shit's worked. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so it's like, usually I, I do kind of tell people about that story. Like if you are working it with it for your throat chakra, lapis is a very strong stone. Mm -hmm. um, so just work with it in small sessions from, you know, based off my experience. But I think that's partially because it's a combination stone. Because you have the, the blue actually comes from sodalite, mm -hmm. which is very much a stone that you can use for your throat chakra as well. Um, and it's about like making, um, I want to say new connections in the brain, but like helping you to like find the right thoughts and find the right words at the right time. And then it has the pyrite inclusions in there as well. So it makes you feel very grounded and protected oh, while you're communicating. I didn't know we had pyrite inclusions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what gives you the little gold flex. Um, it's, all, it's all a little pyrite. But that pyrite, it's like, it's grounding you, it's protecting you, and the soda light's like giving you the words that you want to say yeah. at the exact moment. And you're just like, all right, I'm going to speak it with confidence and gusto. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I have this power, and I'm just going to say it. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, beware whenever you're working with lapis. <laughs> it is very powerful. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just 
it's you know very intense energies whenever you combine multiple stones together mm. so hence like you know why we do crystal gridding and things mm -hmm. like that um but yeah traditionally i or not traditionally i should say but most often i will use lapis kind of for my third eye mm. just because the the sodalite has a lot of um calcium and sodium in it and from my experience any crystal that has sodium in it like selenite or himalayan salt or anything like that it's very cleansing for the physical body mm. um so the combination of calcite and sodium or calcium and sodium together i'm just like it's calming it's soothing my mind yeah. all of my thoughts just putting me in a nice here. meditative state <laughs> yeah and i've got the pyrite around me protecting me from any kind of like lower vibrational or heavier energies that i don't really want to tap into while I'm mm -hmm. you know totally in my head yeah um and it you know the like I said the lapis part it, the blue part of the lapis just puts me in that nice relaxed receptive state for all of those divine messages um but the other stone that I use for my third eye a lot is um iolite which mm. iolite is I mostly for whatever reason when I'm working with my third eye I like to work with angelic forces and for me, Iolite connects with Archangel Raziel, and Raziel is kind of like the Merlin figure of the Archangels, if you want to put it that way. So he's like very much a wizard and very much helps you to kind of like tap into Akashic Records and tap into your psychic skills. So for me, it was just kind of like a no-brainer. It's like, oh, I connect with Archangel Raziel and yeah. the stone connects with him. Let's go for it. And I've had amazing experiences with it. Mm -hmm. It's one of the only psychic stones I that I've worked with that has like a sense of humor. Uh, um, it's <laughs> like witty. Yeah, kind of. very much so. Like all of this, all of the messages come through in like the metaphor of a joke or kind of like some slapstick comedy kind mm -hmm. of sketch. Um, but it's very fun. And then the other stones that I like for like your third eye, of course, like amethyst. Mm -hmm. It's quartz based, so it's very versatile. You can use it for protection, relaxation, develop or like amplification of gifts. Very versatile. Um, but for me, I really do like those those darker blue stones, um, just, just what I connect with personally. Yeah. Um, mostly like the purple stones that I've worked with, like lapidolite and things like that. I use those more for my crown chakra. Mm. Um, some people use like clear stones or white stones, but I'm so used to using those stones for like all of the other points on my body, including my crown, mm -hmm. that I really like the the lighter purples to be more for my crown. It just makes sense for me. Mm -hmm. um, but also lipidolite, I love lipidolite, um, not only just for working with the crown, but for reconnecting with yourself. Um, it has a high mica content in it and naturally occurring mica is supposed to help your soul energy kind of integrate with your physical energy. So all of the, the light in your, in your DNA, all the light in your cells, it kind of helps you express that light without mm -hmm. any fear, without any inhibition. Mm -hmm. So it's great, great uplifting stone. And it's like, it's kind of like having clear cognizance for a little while where you just have that knowing it's like, all right, mm -hmm. I've got this. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I know th exactly how it's going to play out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think my other favorite crown chakra is, um, chair lights. Oh is yes. It, yeah. That's my other favorite one too. Yeah. Um, uh, I really like charite cause it's, it has some really, um, kind of like a marbly texture to it. You can mm -hmm. get some really cool inclusions and, the I've worked with it a few times. It's not like a go-to stone for me, but it is a very powerful psychic activator from any time that I've worked with it or I've, you know, like the crystals talking to me and it's like, I want to work with, for this person. And it's mm -hmm. like, and this is what I'll help with. Um, the charite, it's very much like a stone of psychic discernment. So even if you don't have like super intuitive gifts, it will help you to quickly realize um, kind of like karmic cycles that you're, that you're continuing to partake in. Mm -hmm. So if it's like um, social interactions at, at work or in your, at the club, wherever you're at, um, <laughs> it'll help you kind of realize like, oh, I've had a lot of lifetimes working with this person mm. or a lot of lifetimes arguing with this person. Oh, it's like, <laughs> do I really want to continue with this? And it helps you to kind of realize it and then give you the intuitive advice to take the necessary steps to either you know complete the cycle or to step out of it mm. um so it's very beneficial for that yay thank you that was very, very detailed <laughs> um so earlier you mentioned um about crystal grids mm -hmm. and how like when you put other crystals together they work 
in a more powerful way. Is that, did I say it correctly? Yeah, they yeah. kind of like synergize with each other. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so so yeah, can you just give us like a, like a basics rundown of what a grid is or like how to make one? Yeah, um, so I don't, I really don't like any hard rules. Um, anytime that you tell me something can't be done a certain way, I'm like, well, let's try it and see what happens. Yeah. Um, so I'm very much an experimenter when it comes to working with crystals and kind of feeling which ones harmonize well with each other. And I've read in other books or I've read in books that, um, some crystals will like cancel each other out or negate mm -hmm. each other. I personally do not believe that that happens whenever you're working with crystals. I think if you are, whenever you're working with multiple crystals, if crystals want to go together, if you're feeling like they, they look nice together, or if you feel like they just want to be next to each other, mm -hmm. go ahead and listen to your intuition and follow it because it's helping you with something personal in particular. Um, if you do have crystals that are like, you've got a whole bunch of crystals together. I mean, it can get a little chaotic um, if you're trying to <laughs> tap into all of the different layers that all those crystals are working on. Um, but if you're if you're just kind of letting them work on you in the background, all of those crystals, they won't negate each other, but they'll just work on different parts of your body at the same time or different layers of your aura. Um, but whenever I am working with a grid, usually I will... I'll just kind of grab a bunch of crystals and I'll sit down and I'll start to just put them in a pattern that looks aesthetically pleasing to me. Mm -hmm. So usually my grids are very balanced and they include some type of sacred geometry like circles or triangles or the Merkaba. Um, but it's, it's very much about like, I don't, I guess connecting with the universe. And for me, the sacred geometry is one aspect of that. And the stones are another element. Mm -hmm. And so they just kind of fall into place on their own. Um, other times though, I do get very particular. It's like, I have, you know, I want to work on my dreams tonight. Like I want to have some very vivid dreams. So low to light, great mm -hmm. for your dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll usually get like, you know, two or three different types of stones and, you know, I'll, try and figure out how the stones want to get set up and I just have fun with it create a nice shape and I've done a crystal class before or a crystal grid class with a with a friend and it was like one of the first times I've ever done a non-symmetrical grid but it had a totally different energy from it so I won't say that there's any like hard rules that you have to follow mm -hmm. just make it pretty wait that's not the circle that I went to right is that different? No, no, oh, okay. it was a different one. Um, this one was with, um, she's a local practitioner here. Her name's Vanessa Sandoval. I call her like the crystal shaman. Um, but she does, she does a lot of really good work with um, like empaths and working with crystals, doing like crystal readings kind of things, like telling you how the energy is moving around the crystal. Um, but yeah, it was her class where I did this grid and it kind of like fanned out in a V shape where 99% of the time mine are always like within a circle. Yeah. Um, just because that's what I like. Mm -hmm. um, but I always try to have like a central stone, just one that's a little bit larger than the outside stones because it is kind of like the focal point of all that energy. Mm -hmm. And I have had like a whole bunch of stones kind of going towards one small little quartz point and it was so much energy the quartz actually cracked. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> so your grids can get really intense. Um, but yeah, so just try to make sure that whatever you are asking the energy to flow through it is substantial enough to conduct that energy yeah. so um usually like metal objects are really good because they they conduct energy to a particular part of the body mm. um like if you have any copper statues or anything like that or copper pyramids um, i like to put those in the center of grids to connect more with the physical body mm. and um and also like it's copper is funny because it's it works with the physical body, but it's like the that point that the physical body bridges with the spiritual body. Mm. Um, and then silver, anything with silver in it or that silver color, even because obviously big silver pieces are hard to get affordably. Mm -hmm. um, those are really good for connecting with your emotions. And I like gold for connecting with um, like your your soul. Mm. Um, so that's what I just like to do. Yeah. Sorry, like I rambled there. No, you didn't ramble. <laughs> Basically, it's like, there's no rules. You can do whatever, just what speaks to you when it comes yeah, to it. Yeah, I, I mean, you can get very technical with it if you want to, like, amplify certain aspects or amplify a certain intention. Mm -hmm. The route that I usually go down is with sacred geometry. 
but you can incorporate other things into your crystal grids like flowers, tarot cards, candles, anything that mm -hmm. you really want. Um, cause the crystals, they're just adding like layers of energy for your intention. Mm -hmm. And if you want to add a little bit of, you know, a little bit of energy from your occult practice with tarot cards and what they represent the energy that they hold, go ahead, throw some crystals around them. Let that yeah. be the center for your crystal grid. It won't crack. <laughs> yeah. It would be funny if it just started ripping on its own and you're like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> Powerful magic. <laughs> um, so I, it's already 40 minutes. I know you said you wanted to leave around like 45. Um, but what was the other thing I wanted to ask you? No, I forgot it. Um, is there anything that you want to say that we haven't touched upon yet? Um... I feel like you just gave your basics like crystal class just now. So. <laughs> no, not all of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's another thing too. If um, you want to do learn more about crystals, um, Zach does teach at Enchanted Forest, mm -hmm. and I'll put all the you know description links below so you can find him online. So you can find him in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, one thing I will mention though. Um, as far as crystal grids go, I don't host regular crystal classes. So when you see them on the calendar, come by because it probably won't be on for another few months. Yeah. Um, but we do do a, we do do, um, <laughs> we, we do host a, a crystal grid infused Reiki circle once a month. And mm -hmm. that's the last Friday of every month and different intention every time. So you'll see different themes for the grids, different crystal combinations. And I don't usually talk about it too in depth in that class, but you're always free to kind of bug me afterwards and you know figure out what, what the exact crystals are doing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's really fun and good place to get some nice energy healing in a group setting. I remember. So, so those, well, that actually helped me remember because it was about <laughs> the class. So whenever, you're done with the class you can tell people to take photos and mm -hmm. so i know that when you, you you say that when you take a photo it's the same energy in a photo that you can use for when you go at home absolutely right? um yeah a lot of times when i make a crystal grid i will you don't want it set up for a very long period of time because it's meant to help shift the energy mm -hmm. once the energy shifted you don't need the grid anymore but the being able to take a picture or a snapshot of a crystal grid is it helps you to kind of like transport yourself back into that place and time when it's like oh it was nice and peaceful i want to go back there whenever mm -hmm. i do my meditation i want to feel that energy from those crystals again you don't have to go through the whole process of setting up the grid again um or if it's you know crystals that you don't own you don't have to be like ah dang you can't do that yeah <laughs> yeah i was like oh that's gonna cost uh blah, four digits <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes the grids get expensive because yeah it's <laughs> no but that that's why i love going to those circles because it's that moment to experience that energy if you can't buy it for yourself and bring yeah. it home. So absolutely. Definitely and, recommend it. <laughs> and the other night we had, I think it was a $4,000 angel phantom Ooh! quartz as our centerpiece. Oh, and man. as soon as I walked in the door and Debbie had just put it out for sale, I was like, this is going in the grid. Thank you. <laughs> You're like, don't put that there just yet. I need that. Yeah. <laughs> but that, oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. But yay. Um, do you want to tell everyone where we can find you? Well, do you, hold on, let's, let's check on the time here because I know you're in the, oh, it's, it's only 546. What the heck? Oh, cool. Thing. We can keep going cool. <laughs> if you want. Yeah, you said 615. Let me um, just change my, my leg because oh, it's yeah. asleep. And you brought some crystals, right? Did you want to talk about them? Oh yeah, sure. Um, let's see, we'll, we'll just talk about this one. So, um, this is a, uh, roll on applicator for some essential oils. And I got these from essentialoilry.com and they're really cool because they have crystal chips inside of them. So you can, Is that lapis? yep. And these oh, are lapis. Cool. Um, I use this one for my meditation blend because like I said, the lapis, it's very protective and it puts me in a nice relaxed space and the essential oils and your crystals, they work really well together because the plant medicine, it's trying to help heal you from its perspective, which tends to be more of a, um, more of a watery kind of perspective, more of an emotional perspective, mm -hmm. whereas the stones can be watery on occasion, but most of the time it's like, for me, they're very physical. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas the plants have a little bit of that emotional water element to them. And so they harmonize really nice with each other, get that, 
that water and that earth together. You can get like a nice mud bath almost oh, cool. <laughs> with the energy. I've actually never done a mud bath, but that's on my list of things to do in life. Oh, gotta try it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so like this, this particular blend is uh, sandalwood and jasmine and sweet orange. Mm. And this is my, my meditation blend that I like to use. And like I said, the lapis, it, it helps me with the meditation, just going in deeper. So I figured, why not put them together? Mm -hmm. And once I did, it's like everyone, as soon as I put the oil on them during the classes or anytime I use it during meditation, it's like two seconds in. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's just taking me. <laughs> got the aromatherapy. I've got the crystal energy. All good to go. Yep. <laughs> and then I'm going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I've never actually seen anything like that, so that's really cool for... Yeah, these are these are really fun. Um, the only thing I'd say, though, is if you want to kind of like put crystal chips in your oil, um, make sure that your stones are either tumbled and sealed or they are a type of crystal that is um, water friendly mm. because you don't want something that's going to be like absorbing. Oh yeah, like dissolving. Yeah, absorbing or dissolving in your in your oil. Um, I mean, wouldn't hurt to have a little bit of selenite, but you're gonna have to replace your selenite <laughs> after Every time. a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of water, I actually also wanted to touch up upon like the whole crystal water thing that I keep hearing about. Oh yeah. Um, have you personally done that? Like put crystal in your water? I have. Um, so as far as crystal elixirs go or crystal water, I love shungite water. Ooh. Shungite, it's, it's very popular right now. Um, there's been a lot of research done on it and people I think have even won like Nobel awards for the research on shungite. But it comes from a prehistoric lake bed in Russia and the czars of Russia used to go there to drink the healing waters and to kind of like soak in the water. And research has shown that the shungite has a very high carbon content, which is good for your body because mm -hmm. we're carbon-based beings. Mm -hmm. um, but the, whenever I was like, I'm always like skeptical. I like to experiment with things. Yeah. Um, Same. <laughs> I'm, I'm still very in the 3d, like, um, like on, on some days, mm -hmm. but, um, so I did a little side-by-side -side comparison where I had a shungite water filter and, um, just a regular glass of water and, it was bottle, two bottles of water from the same package. And yeah. I put one through the Shungite filter and just the other one in the glass. And it was like the difference between drinking whole milk and skim milk. Mm -hmm. The, the untreated water, it's like, tasted like normal water. Like we all know what water tastes like, mm -hmm. but the, the treated water with the Shungite, whenever I was drinking it, it felt thicker. It oh, felt wow. like it was actually being absorbed into all of my cells, into all the tissue. And after just a couple of sips, I actually felt hydrated where normally I like, I, I can drink all day and it runs right through me, but the shungite water, it's like, oh, I actually feel like I'm absorbing this. Mm -hmm. This is weird. Oh, cool. <laughs> I have a shungite at home and I'm curious. I want to try it. <laughs> I would definitely hesitate to just put random tumbled shungite in your water mm -hmm. only because, um, it is a naturally growing rock and sometimes there will be other trace minerals that are growing in there. Mm -hmm. And so I've even ordered some elite shungite, which has a higher carbon content. They actually kind of look like your shoes. They're so shiny. Um, <laughs> but the, sometimes even those have like little rust colored veins in them. And so you really want to get some shungite that's been like broken down and kind of processed mm -hmm. to make sure that it's just pure shungite okay. and not anything else. Well, it's a good in. thing I brought that up then because yeah. I was about to drop some <laughs> of that shungite in my water. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you're working with crystals in your water or with your food, um, you always want to make sure that there's not any kind of like metallic elements or anything like that, that could be leaching into the water, or into your food. Um, like there are some stones that are great to cook on, like, um, you can get big slabs of Himalayan salt and heat mm -hmm. them up in your oven and like sear steaks on them. And it's amazing. Cool. <laughs> um, but like you obviously wouldn't want to do that with something that has like copper or nickel yeah. in it or anything like that. Um, and some stones that look metallic even have sulfur in them, like stibnite. Mm. It looks like your shoes, very metallic. <laughs> um, but it does have sulfur in it. So like you have to wash your hands even after you handle it. Mm. Um, there's, there are a few lists that you can find. Um, we have one printed out at the shop, so I don't know where where you guys would go to look one up. Um, but pretty much anything that's quartz-based, 
is going to be safe for your water. Mm -hmm. um, anything that's been polished, as long as there's not like, you know, it's not an included quartz that has like iron jutting out one side of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, stick with like a clear quartz or a rose quartz. Um, amethyst does technically have aluminum in it, but usually it's sealed so perfectly inside the crystal it can't leach out. Mm -hmm. um, but whenever in doubt, you can always use your crystals just like right next to your glass of water instead of actually in the water. Mm. And the energy will transfer to your water just the same as it would if it was soaking. Mm, okay. Because so, yeah. I've seen water bottles where like they have the little indentation and you put mm -hmm. the crystal in there. And then yeah. I don't know if it's like a filter or if it just it's just sitting there and doesn't touch your water. I have seen both. Some that will filter and some that it's just like a glass container. Mm. Um, so yeah, either way works fine as long as the intention is there that the crystals are connecting and sending the energy to the water, the water yeah. then you're totally fine. Cool. Um, so yeah, better safe than sorry. <laughs> yeah, because I haven't, well, I, I kind of tried it once with one of my citrines, but I was like, it, did, it didn't feel like it felt a little off. So mm -hmm. I felt like I needed to do more research to fully delve into trying cr more crystal water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Guess the moral of the story, just don't shove any crystal <laughs> in your water. <laughs> no, no random crystals in your drinking water, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, please do your research. Yeah, unless it's like, you know, activated charcoal filtering your water or something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Well, do you have anything else? I th that's all I, I got for now. And okay. Yeah, we got okay. we got to we got to head out soon and then this uh, helicopter is really loud. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, helicopter. Hi, helicopter. Uh, we have to do our outro now. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so did I already tell, ask you where to find you online? I don't remember oh, if you said it. My um, short I didn't say it, but you did ask me. <laughs> um, so, um, I don't have like my own website or anything yet, uh, just because I'm still in the process of growing. But you can find like my bio and my list of classes at EnchantedForestReiki.com on their classes and events page and under their practitioner list. Um, otherwise, I am on Instagram and Etsy as The Wired Wizard. Mm -hmm. So um, if you have any crystal questions, you can message me there. Um, but yeah, just watch. You can't hear anything. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll put all the links in the description, and so you can just click away and find them on wherever he just said if we can even hear it through the audio <laughs> <laughs> but yay thank you so much for joining me and thank for you doing Rosemary this. it's yay. amazing yay <laughs> you didn't feel nervous at all right <laughs> no not too much <laughs> okay cool yay so thank you again for watching uh, let me know what your favorite crystals are or if you've had any cool experiences with yeah. your crystals and we'll see you next time bye bye <laughs>